What's up guys, Spinfire Arms here, and today we're going to talk about something that I do regularly and I really enjoy and I definitely think it's a great part of everyday carry and I think it could fit in your lifestyle as well as everyone else's lifestyle and trust me, it'll make EDC easier. But before we get started, let's safety check the firearm even though I safety check it every time prior to the video. Nothing, nothing. We are clear. Now, also, hit the like button, drop a comment down below. I appreciate everything you guys do for me. Um, hitting the like button, dropping a comment, and subscribing are all free. It means a lot to me. I put in a lot of work in these videos. Um, I order a lot of different materials, different items, different products, different firearms, just to review them, hopefully to save you guys some money, hopefully so you guys can get a better understanding and learn something, because that's the goal. Every video, I want you guys to learn something. Anyways, this is my Smith & Wesson MMP 40 shield right and this is my new go-to everyday carry for work now I have a video coming out on why that is it should already be out by the time this video is released but it makes sense now I have the mad guts kit which makes it 7 plus 1 and I have a 357 sig conversion barrel coming in which would be 7 plus 1 of 357 sig making it one of the most powerful firearms in the world for its size and weight and that is why I choose this for pocket carry. But someone wanted me to make a little video talking about the difference between different pocket holsters and specifically sticky holsters, which I have a bunch of, and then the Vetter pocket locker holsters, which I have a ton of as well. Now, both of them play a role. I'm not gonna say, oh, just cause I like the Vetter one better, this doesn't play a role, right? But for instance, let's take a look at it, right? The sticky holster, right? It is sticky. So when you go to draw out of your pocket, it basically sticks to your pants, giving you a nice, even, clean draw where that holster is not gonna come with it. Also, you can get a great grip on that firearm, um, and it's much easier to manipulate with your thumb if you have to to get a good grip. It is much easier because it is flexible. But being flexible is also its downside, right? I usually carry an FN503 as my pocket carry for work, and I pocket carry about 60 65 hours a week at work and I fell from a ladder luckily I was using a better pocket locker holster but I fell off a ladder probably six to eight feet landed right on my FN 503 now it didn't go off and the holster surprisingly the better pocket locker holster didn't break and I always keep one in the chamber now my question is though that I always keep asking myself if I was using a soft holster would something have gotten in this trigger guard could this have pressed inward on that trigger, especially the FN503 being such a light trigger? It is longer, but it is light. So I always wonder, if I was carrying with a different holster, would I have had a whole different situation that was negative, bad, and could have been pretty dangerous, right? But another reason I use the sticky holster. When I first order a firearm, or let's say it's a brand new release, which I tend to not buy brand new releases, I try to wait six months so they can work out all their issues. But if I order a firearm and I get it, and it's a two, three you know, week lead time, like most holster companies are, then I use my sticky holsters. One, they can be used with multiple brands. Like this, one holster right here can probably fit 10, 15 different firearms snug, right? And not only can you pocket carry it, but you can appendix carry it. And you don't need any clips or anything. Honestly, it just sticks. If you're, you have a belt or gym shorts, it honestly just sticks right in there. The one thing I will say though is it doesn't sit as close to your body. There is nothing that pushes it close to your body, so it sort of just sits upright, right? And it is what it is. If you can um, not print, then more power to you. But for me, when I have it upright, um, I print. But while I wait for a new holster for one of my new firearms, I will use a sticky holster because that's all I have. And like I said, I have a bunch of them, so chances are one of the ones that I have will cover that firearm. Now. There's people that actually carry these for pocket carry. I would never recommend that. But for the reasons I just explained, those are all great things. Next up, this is the Vetter Pocket Locker Holsters. And there's some positives and negatives to this as well. But first off, this one has the claw. That angles out a little bit, so when you go to draw, it snags in your shorts, right? But on top of that, you have a second fail safe. Your thumb press, right? I, forget, I think they call it a thumb tap. So when you go to draw in your pocket, you can push that. And on top of that, as you're drawing and you push, this right here is gonna hook onto something in your pocket. Sometimes it stays in your pocket. Other times, this holster will go flying and it's almost like a distraction. So let's say you know, you were being held at gunpoint or like they were shaking you down and they went and shook someone else down. 
um, and you have a chance to draw this may go flying over there when you go to draw they may look over like what's that commotion and boom you now have your opportunity to defend yourself and your loved ones now obviously it is bigger I'm not even gonna lie I am a little biased because I love this holster even though it's about the same size this can bend right this can curl this can you know fit your body this is stuck because it is kydex right so it is a larger footprint but at the same time like I said when I fell off the ladder I had no issues actually this was the only problem this caused a big 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 bruise on my thigh but that's okay because I was alive I didn't get injured nobody get injured um, that's that but also the other thing I really like about it is retention it's just like a regular holster right there's retention to it and that is huge for me because let's say you're in a self-defense encounter and you get knocked to the ground this is gonna stay there in your pocket hooked on something and on top of that your firearm is gonna stay in that holster where something like this let's say you get knocked to the ground or someone pushes you this could just release your firearm because honestly it is not a tight fit at all right it just it, it just isn't and it is what it is both of them hold their place but I've been using these maybe for a couple years now. I have one for my FN503, CZP10M, my Bodyguard. I have one for my Ruger LCP Max. Um, I have one for my Shield. I mean, I, I have so many of them, and I love every single one of them. Like I said, I fell off the top of the ladder. No problems. It didn't break. Nothing. I continued to carry that day. Now, I do new construction plumbing, and I work about 60 hours a week. The main reason I go for something like this is I'm active, right? I'm bending over, I'm using tools, things are getting moved around, I'm being bumped into, I'm tripping, I'm falling. And so my safest option is the better pocket locker holster. And I know that there's other Kydex pocket locker holsters out there and stuff like that. But one, if it's just a trigger guard holster, I will never use that for pocket carry at work. And then two, I like how thick this is. There's a bunch of other ones that are thin and flimsy, and they're good holsters, but at the same time, how durable are they, right? And for my work carry, I go for what's durable. Hence, the Smith & Wesson MP40 Shield, one of the most durable single stacks in the world. Still very light, still very powerful, especially in that 357 SIG setup that I have coming. But also, I have this, right? Nothing's going to happen to this. This is going to take a massive beating. I should have got my one from my FN503 to show you guys. All it is is full of scratches, full of dust, you know, whatever the case may be. But it's lasted the test of time. Vetter pocket locker holsters are what I carry with, and I'm going to continue carrying with them. I use, like I said, my bodyguard, my LCP Max, all that. And in gym shorts and sweatpants, this setup right here may be a little too big. But in cargoes or jeans, this is perfect. But for something like gym shorts and sweatpants, I recommend getting a bodyguard, LCP Max, LCP, Tor Spectrum, Diamondback DB9, which they make these for. And that'll fit perfectly in your pocket, in gym shorts. And once again, you'll have that nice hook or claw. And you also have that nice thumb tap. Now, one thing I will say about pocket carry is be very, very, very careful um, of your firearm and how often you are cleaning it. I used to make it a routine every two weeks, right? But then when I'd open up my firearm, I'd take it down and I'd go to clean it, I'd realize it was an absolute disaster on the inside. I had lint in the striker. I had wood shavings in the striker. I had glue, primer. I literally had everything you could imagine in my firearm inside my holster. Because the thing is, another downside of this is stuff gets in there and it gets stuck. Now there is a crack which does let a lot of the stuff go. But on my FN 503 one, there was no crack. So a lot of the stuff would just get gunked up in here. So I make sure to clean these at least once a week because this is what I rely on for 60 to 65 hours per week. And if this firearm isn't gonna go bang, then there's no point in me lugging around this setup, right? So when it comes down to it, they both have their place. The sticky holster for me is, you know, you want something until your new holsters here or even you can pocket carry while not being active and so on whereas something like this this better pocket locker holster this is the go-to holster for literally everything you can do anything with it and it's going to keep everything out of that trigger guard it is going to be just like a regular holster just sitting in your pocket um and it's been absolutely great and i've never had a single issue trying to get this off people always say oh yeah you have the you know the retention blah 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 you're never gonna get that off 
Guys, you just gotta practice with it. You have two fail safes. One, the hook, and two, the push tab. And I have videos up on my channel of me showing how fast you can draw from the pocket. And another nice thing about pocket carry is, instead of going, a lot of people think self-defense, you know, they go to the range, they go to train, and they're fully extended, right? Aimed at the target, fully extended. But that's not self-defense. Chances are you're gonna be maybe one hand, you're gonna be up here, you're gonna be right up against your chest, you're gonna be at the hip. The nice thing about pocket carry is, according to a bunch of the, oh, sorry, according to a bunch of the self-defense classes that I took and things that I learned, one of the fastest ways to shoot in self-defense is right by your hip. And what's right by your hip? Your pocket. That's where your firearm is. So if you can draw from your pocket and just shoot straight from the hip, keep this thumb out, keep this thumb pressed up against your body, and your firearm is going to be like this, there's no way you're going to miss. Because what they said is your body just naturally knows how to line up with another human body. So as long as you have it at the hip and you're not using sights, literally, this is at your waistline, waistband, aimed like this, you're not going to miss. And that thumb stays pressed up against your body and this stays angled out. Therefore, that reciprocating slide is not hitting you, causing your firearm to go out of battery or malfunction. So therefore, you want something like that for pocket carry. That's how you'd want to train. You'd want to train to get your first shots from the hip and then you can gradually move up towards the chest and then push outward. But chances are you're going to be up close and personal with someone. So coming straight from the pocket to the hip is going to be your best bet. Anyways, they're both great products. you got to give it up to both of them. But I trust my life with the better pocket locker. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the, hit the like button. Drop a comment down below. Subscribe. It means a lot to me.